everybody, welcome back. Last week we took a break from electrical and painted some calipers. This week we're gonna get back into it. We're gonna fix all that wiring mess. We're gonna see if we can get battery pack two functional. And then we've got uh, the electronic parking brake. So we'll see if we can get all that done. All right, so uh, I successfully trimmed and rewired I don't know, what is it, like 104 wires or something like that. So that's kind of the carnage. Um, I'll clean this up so I can kind of tie it out of the way how I think it, I want it, and then uh, we'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here it is cleaned up just a little bit. Um, I got my high voltage box there. Again, I think both the BMS box and this box, I think are just kind of more temporary just to make sure that I like location and how things are going. I think I'll get uh, some metal ones made. But uh, anyway, so I got this, if you remember, we had the, the cable here with all the BMS wires and we had just a huge loop. And so now that loop's gone. This is goes up here, kind of along the back and then over to that side. So that's all kind of cleaned up. Um, here we've got the uh, those two going out that way are for the motor. Um, that one going back there is for the, anyway, that's the negative side for one battery pack. This will be the positive from the switch, from the cutoff switch. But uh, yeah, that's kind of how it's looking. The one thing I've got to still do is there's still the one cell that's got a low voltage. So I'm gonna bring that one up uh, by itself. I've got a uh, single cell charger. Um, so I will start doing that. Cross your fingers, we don't make things worse. All right, we started out at like 2.8 something. So I just got the single cell charger going through the plug here all the way to this battery. So we'll let it go for, I don't know, maybe start at an hour and see uh, how much the voltage rises. All right, I was able to bring the other, the low cell it's around 2.9 up to 3.5, so right in line with all the others. So I'll go ahead and put it back in place here and then uh, test the BMS units. Um, I did get a replacement one from EV West, so we'll go ahead and test all of them. Uh, I guess one more time I'll, I'll do this uh, BMS tester here, make sure all the voltages look good. But then hopefully we'll have two functioning um, battery management systems that'll work. All right, so I think we're uh, ready to go. We'll give this a try and uh, hope it works. All right, so it looks like it detected all the BMS, uh, all the LTCs. We still have a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect. So it was showing a cell 87 in a high voltage condition and cell 88 in a low voltage condition. So I'll go ahead, I'll, I'll show you what I think are those cells. Um, at least on the BMS board, it doesn't read that way. So, so between, so cell 87 says it's in a high voltage condition and it says it's 5.44, cell 88 it says it's 1.79. Um, so for whatever reason, those couple cells, um, they're not reading the same as when I read it on the BMS board. So I'm just looking for some help. I'll show you here real quick. Um, but essentially this should be on the last BMS number eight. And so I've got uh, BMS eight hooked up here. And so if I do this, you know, 12 would be 96. So 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. So it should be between 4 and 3. Um, and so when I go between all these, I don't get any that seem out of, out of the normal range, right around 3.5. So I'll go ahead and go through these. But uh, so, so there's 3, 2, 4. So I get three and a half. So if, I'll go through all of them though. So this is from 12 to 11, uh, 11 to 10, 10 to nine, 
9 to 8, 8 to 7, 7 to 6, 6 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 1, from 1 to 0. So again, they're all pretty close to 3.5, um, but again, none of them are 5.4, so uh, I don't know what else to do. I mean, this is the uh, plug that's reading the voltages, the BMS. Um, that's, by the way, that's the new BMS. So, not quite sure what to do. All right, so I'm gonna plug in the last BMS uh, one more time and turn on the power, hit show cells, and then power down. Um, both times I've only connected it for maybe 10 seconds, just enough to say show cells, and as soon as I saw the air, I pulled it out. So hopefully we're not causing any issues. So it detects all of them. So again, I hit show cells. It already said it was in over voltage condition. So again, I don't know what the heck's going on. There's nothing I can do. It's coming closer. I don't know if I should leave it. So I'm gonna go ahead and dis disconnect here. It just seems to be variable, like it's jumping around. So here 87, I'll bring it closer. All right, so see here, cell 87 was two, and cell 88 was 4.8. So again, I did this a couple times, so I'll go ahead and scroll up. So here, cell 87 was 4.3. And cell 80, so again, the voltage is flopped, so it seems like whatever that is, it's not stable. And the first time we did it, Again, cell 87 was five, 5.3. So again, just in a matter of seconds, it's changing all around. Because it was 5.3, then it's 4.3. Come down here and it's two. So again, I don't know if this is a battery module issue or a BMS issue. Again, this is the brand new BMS. When I look at the uh, little chip, the reader for all the cells, um, it reads right in line with everything else, right around 3.5. So I don't know what to do. All right, so if I disable balancing cells, um, I don't get the air anymore. So I'll ask to see what that means. Uh, to me, it means, well, it seems like there, there's a problem with one of the modules, but uh, yeah. All right, I've been doing uh, testing after testing after testing with the uh, battery modules from pack two, as well as the BMS. And uh, the guys at Dilithium Design have helped quite a bit in uh, the troubleshooting. We've done everything and uh, traced it back to the battery module. So uh, they think the battery module has a bad trace lead or something like that. Anyway, uh, I contacted EV West um, I don't know, a week or two ago and still haven't received a response. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. All right, so I'm looking now at the electronic parking brake. Um, I've got an aftermarket unit that I bought. It's uh, from, Pan I think it's called Pantera. Let's see. Pantera Electronics. So Essentially what this does is, um, so I've got the Tesla parking brake, but I don't really have a way to activate it. So they've got a little logic unit here that will allow activation, park and unpark. I've got this button here, kind of lights up red with the parking brakes engaged and green, it's free to go. And it's got some plugs, some wire. So I'm gonna give this a go and see, uh, see how it works, see how I like it. All right, I got the brakes uh, back on. So I think they're looking pretty good. Now, um, 
I've got the uh, electronic parking brake, so I've got to uh, attach the cable here, kind of route it through the frame and everywhere. It needs both, uh, well, it's got a switch and I think it needs 12 volt constant. So we'll get to wiring. All right, so I've got the uh, plugs here to go to the uh, electronic parking brake, so they're all wired up. And so I've got 25 feet of wire um, on the car. So essentially I'll have one plug, you know, obviously in there and we'll run around the frame. My thought is I'll put this uh, control box, I'll put it kind of probably right, right in here. Um, obviously the other one goes from the other side, but both wires have to come into here. So, and then in here, they've got, uh, so the, there's four wires in each plug. And so, what's this one? Yeah, it's right here. This is the right side, this is the left side. All right, and then this is for the switch. So here's my switch, and it'll light up uh, red and green depending if it's on or off. And then uh, the middle ones are just for, again, for the control. So it needs one the constant power, one switch power, and uh, also a ground. So we'll start, uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can find a good place for it and uh, kind of start running the wires and see how far we get. I have my electronic BMS all wired. Um, I've got the one wire that's from the constant source. So you can kind of see, but there's a green, little green light kind of on in there. And so supposedly when I go and hit, uh, well, I gotta get the passive keyless entry in range, but supposedly when I hit start, then it will have the switched power. And I don't know, because this is the first time it's ever woken up, it may wake up and wanna close. Um, maybe it'll just wake up normally and then I have to push the button there to close. But in theory, that button will light up, light up green or red, depending if this is open or closed, and then I should be able to push it and open and close it. So, We'll, we'll bring you along. Um, let's just see how this one goes. All right, we're getting this passive keyless entry in range. Okay. So that's in range. I do not know if the start button is on. It does not look like it's on, so I'll go turn it on. All right, so here's this button. So we'll go ahead and push it, and then we'll see what that one does. We'll see if we hear any noises back here. We'll go ahead. So that's red. I didn't hear anything there. So we'll go ahead and push this and see if it goes green. <gasps> I heard it. It's still showing red though. Let's see if we can move this. So yeah, that's locked. We'll go check the other side. All right, here's the other side. It is also locked. All right, so we'll go and uh, see if we can push the button and unlock it. Okay, we'll try this, see if it opens. Well, it turned green and it sounded like it opened. So let's go try it out. And it's free to spin. So let's try the other side. So here's the other side. And we are free to spin. So I believe it's working as intended. All right, that does it for this week. See you next week.